Good morning, everybody. I am doing a short, well, I never really have a short, short video, but I'm doing a shorter video with my coffee on a couple of things that are, to me, completely necessary to be a shoreline fisherman primarily. Now, shoreline fishermen typically go out a lot earlier. Uh, they're getting morning fish. I woke up late because it's a day off for me. I have an alternating week, so this is my alternating Friday off. And I just want to go over a couple of tools uh, verbally and in person because most of the stuff is in my bag in the boat. Uh, when you crack a rod or you break a tip and you don't have a kit available, what I recommend you keep in your bag is a really small uh, drill bit. And you can actually super glue uh, any kind of makeshift homemade handle to that. And you can use it in a rotary or a punch pattern to uh, get the fiberglass or whatever material the rod is made of out of the tip that you have broken off. It may seem like it's malarkey, but Trust me, it actually works. And I've found, actually, that a really tiny uh, eyeglass-type uh, screwdriver that's in a flathead, those real small kits, work really well because you can sit there with your hand and you just turn it and it'll pulverize it because it's already broken on the inside of the tip. I actually have uh, that particular thing in my gun pack. This is my general purpose gun one. It covers like 70% uh, of the calibers. So basically, um, a kit like this, I got this at Harbor Freight for like five bucks. It's got every conventional size in it. And uh, show you the kind of the sizes that I'm talking about here. Now, when it comes to the flathead style. I like to go as small as possible. This is Cronus brand. It's just a, a cheapy Harbor Freight sold design uh, brand. But see how small that tip is? Because I want to be able to get in the middle of the uh, flared fibers from the brake and start turning. If I get to a point where there's a hole in it but it's not enough for the rod, then I'll just gradually step up, step up. Uh, there's three of the flatheads and three of the um, Phillips heads in here. I haven't had any coffee yet so I'm really still kind of groggy. Uh, but I wanted to jump on and make videos like right away. So this Cronus thing, I mean it literally, it was five bucks and I replaced probably five or six tips in the time I've had this uh, by doing that because I don't believe you should have to go and spend 10 15 bucks on a freaking rod tip and the glue associated with it. it. It's retarded to me. So, that's that portion. Now, for everything else rod repair, I use only regular Gorilla Super Glue. This happens to be the Impact Tough formula. Uh, the Impact Tough is important to me because I find that it. Uh, has a stronger bond than any other super glue I've used ever and it's it's pretty ridiculous I've actually repaired soft plastics with this as well so I keep one in the bag I have another one somewhere I just bought and I don't know where I put it but this is my old one it still works it's still got some left um, things that I keep in my bag I have either a trout deep net or a foldable uh, nine inch net always with me. I prefer the foldable because sometimes in the summer I wear cargo shorts and I have my small box on one side and my uh, my um, net on the other. And I can keep virtually everything in a portable package, have a camel pack on for my hydration, I'm good to go. I can walk literally anywhere. Uh, I'm very geared towards shoreline because that's primarily what I do because I don't have a boat right now. So. I keep needle nose with the cutter in case I don't have a cutter with me. This is just kind of a backup plan. 
I keep cut points. Uh, the ones I have in my bag right now are bigger than these two, actually. Well, excuse me. The needle nose is smaller because of the pocket it goes in, but the one of these that I have in there is the large scale because it's overall the same length as the smaller needle nose I have. So I kind of space it in in a, a variety of ways depending on the pack I'm using. These are a uh, full set of tools from Harbor Freight, again, Harbor Freight brand. They've not let me down. I'm not in my life right now with an apartment into having super high-end things of that nature because I know there's a propensity for people to break into apartments. Uh, my firearms are extensively expensive, but you know, other than that, I kind of keep it simple. Um, so, super glue, uh, at least one flat nose uh, screwdriver for repair. You can also have a uh, carbon fiber sheet or fiberglass sheet. Uh, I get that from when I was making a lot of RC planes. You can keep uh, bubble yum or bazooka. You chew it till it's soft. You wrap it inside of or outside of things. Press it, make sure it's flat. Let it sit overnight. It hardens up into this ridiculously hard substance. In fact, I've had people that have gotten a gum soft and then put super glue in the gum and done it to make it even harder. But it's very common for uh, people that make RCs to use gum as corner joints. So if you have to do things like, if you happen to be in a boat and you have an aluminum, for example, and you spring a leak somewhere and you know where it is, when you dry dock it to repair it, all you got to do is do that. If you put that seal in there, it's soft enough, it's going to come come in that whole hole as opposed to like a JB Weld that would take a lot of work. And I've worked with JB Weld on flat bottoms, it's a bitch. Okay, so you always keep gum on there and then put the JB Weld over the top of it after you sanded it down to the hole. You don't want to leave any of the gum on there. You want to put the JB Weld over it as a seal. Or you can use Flex Seal. It's a really new product that really works good actually. Um, I keep a variety of circle style bait hooks and uh, roach shad style life bait hooks in the front pocket of my bag. Uh, that's because a lot of the fishing I do is life bait. I want to keep at least one box of swim baits in my bag because they just they catch fish. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of swim baits they are, if you're comfortable fishing them, at least have a box with two or three even. It, it really doesn't matter. You gotta tailor yourself to what you're taking out for the day. I have a lot of, I have a box in my bag that has a lot of different um, split shots, lead and steel uh, for rigs. I have a lot of um, uh, bobber stoppers that I order off of eBay because the ones that are in the store are way too big for my ultralights and they always get stuck. Um, I have leader line. I have main line because if I'm taking my heavy rods out and I'm using 15, 20, 25, and 30 pound uh, Berkeley Big Game monofilament, <coughs> I do that because it's cheap and it works. Uh, the fall rate with swim baits and stuff like that. If I want to use fluorocarbon, I'll buy it and use it, but for the most part, most of the swim baits I like to use with a really slow rate of fall, and then it gets enhanced with the rate of fall being slower if I use mono. I may change that around a little bit later on, I'm not sure yet. So I have all that kind of stuff in my bag if I'm going in that, that type of fishing. Uh, right now I've got a seven foot which has got two foot of hand thumb cork uh, handle alone a musky rod for my uh, flight headed channel catfishing I have 30 pound Berkeley on it but what I'm doing because I want to get back into carp as well is I'm taking a number one pure circle hook and basically either putting a buttload of corn on it or wrapping it with bread 
has some awesome response. The drag on the Lose SC100 that I have on it uh, is so, so strong. But it's one of those drags that's so easy to turn all the way down that you can let it be almost like a bait clicker without having a bait clicker. Only thing I let I have happen is when they start pulling the line, I'll click my bail, or excuse me, my, my spool release. I'll click it and it'll start going and I'll have my finger control at that point because I know they're, they're moving and then I'll turn my drag up to where I know it's not going to pull too much and then I'll clip and set the hook. It's kind of involved because I don't have a bait click uh, drag type bait cast but it works and that's the line I'm keeping in my bag when I take it out and right now I'm taking it out almost all the time. I take, uh, <coughs> since my uh, two primary spinning rods are out of commission. I'm taking my medium heavy Ducket Ghost uh, Cronarch uh, bait cast setup for my medium heavy uh, slip bobber light bait rig, which is the one for uh, chicklets, smaller cats, bass. That's the one I use for that. Then I have the heavier one for the carp and the big catfish. And uh, then I have uh, my Ultralight from Ultralight, which is a custom-made one from uh, um, Southwest Custom Rods, Ron Weber. <laughs> Fantastic rod. I, I've finally got a rod that's got every single thing in an Ultralight I've ever wanted and nothing I don't. It really is that good. And I paid 240 for it. Uh, I could have paid 200 flat, but I gave him a tip. <clears throat> always tip a rod maker. Always. So, um, it's the first completely custom rod I've had in about 14 years. It's awesome. So, I keep a complement of ultralight all the way through heavy in my car. I usually keep my rods in my car unless I'm par feeling paranoid about the way people are acting that day. Uh, you can tell when you live in apartments, shit's going on. But in general, in a pack, you have something to mend with, i.e. glue, uh, the tools like the uh, needles and the cutters, it's always good to have them, they come in in a pinch. The flathead, uh, super glue in there, some type of leader line if you want. Uh, I keep braid handy because it's just pretty cool. If you're using a lot of soft plastic, something to dip for color and, and smell, like dip it. Uh, just kind of be smart about what you're planning on taking. My small pack is tailored to live bait fishing because I do a lot of it. I throw a cast net and I catch a wide variety of bait and it's primarily what I use now unless I'm on the hunt with lures. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to go over. I know it, it, it's kind of a long video and I kind of ran off here and there but I kind of wanted to give you a general idea of some of the uh, methodology behind how I pack a pack. Uh, I don't physically have my pack with me, sorry. I'll probably get more in detail one of these days and just have my pack with me. But that's just kind of a general idea. The funny thing is, I was talking about the super glue. In a little bit, I'm going to go to the RC store because my uh, hellbent got popped by some petulant child that didn't know uh, fishing etiquette from a fucking hole in the ground. So he ran right through my rods and busted it. Uh, this Hellbent and I, we've been through a lot, fishing-wise. And I love this rod. I love Hellbent. The combo that I had, this is uh, from number 8, the Hellbent. It's the HB2S7ML. It's a 7-foot medium light fast action, 48-pound line. 16th ounce to 3 and 8 ounce lure. Uh, the last designation is 04E AF. Uh, AF, I think, stands for action forward or action, action fast, one of the two. But it's got a hook holder, which most of the reputable rods these days are starting to have. But here's the thing I like about this helmet, and this is why I'm repairing it as opposed to just buying a new one because I know I can make it stronger by repairing it. It is a hybrid handle. It has both EVA and the cork, which is really cool to me. And the balance point on this thing uh, with the reel that they have is really, really, really good. I have the uh, Daya Rev Revros 
in the 2000 size. I've done a review on this as well. This is the one that I have on this rod. This is why I want to repair it. Because I made these purchases on a whim. This rod and this reel. And they are perfectly balanced for each other. And this with 8 pound line is fantastic on this rod. For either live bait or jerk baits. Good God is it awesome for jerk baits. I guess that, that certain type of, of uh, pop at the rod tip because of the fast action. And it just, it makes those jerk baits pop like they're meant to pop. Like they're designed to, basically. A lot of rods and reels uh, put together don't do it for jerk baits like that. This rod and reel combo, good God does it work. So, the other thing I was going to say about repairing rods is I'm going to get a length of carbon fiber dowel in that size. I'm actually taking this with me to the, the craft store and telling them I need a hollow tube carbon core uh, spar, which is usually used in wings on RC planes, so I can put it in there with Gorilla Glue and push it together and let it set for about 40 minutes or so, and it will literally be like it never was broken. It's the same hollow core type technology that rods are made with, and uh, it will significantly improve the strength in that section of the rod, so hopefully I won't have any issues after that. I've pulled in 15 pound uh, channel cats, 6 to 8 pound bass on this rod with 8 pound line. It, it really is great with that Reveros. The Reveros, I cannot say enough good about. Daiwa makes a solid ass spinning reel. They're just sick. So, take what I said for what it is. Uh, you may not agree with some of the stuff. Uh, that's okay with me. I, I, you know, you're entitled to whatever your opinion is, but this is just simply the way that I go about things to make it as simple and effective as possible. The one thing I don't have right now, I think it's in my camel pack and I got to put it in my bag, is the first aid kit. Because there are a lot of times where you get damaged when you're doing things fishing, and I always get damaged. So, uh, yeah, first aid kit, definitely. Good fishing. Hope you all are uh, very successful in what you do in life. I hope you have peacefulness, and I will be back with more uh, fishing-wise at some point. Uh, my next video is going to be about inflammation in the human body, so it's completely different than fishing.